That's quite big. Impressive. Ooh, that's kind of small. Yikes. The selection of biocontrol agents is vast in aggregate. Sometimes there are multiple specialist or generalist agents to choose from for one target, and knowing the environments under which they operate best and poorest helps the cultivator know what to expect were they to use them. The most important aspect of a biocontrol agent is its ability to control a target pest as rapidly as possible. And the trait that usually controls this attribute is intrinsic rate of natural increase, which is births to minus deaths per generation. Population dynamics are important to the success of a biocontrol agent because their speed of reproduction multiplies their rate of direct control through killing the pest. For microarthropods like predatory mites and parasitic wasps, for example, it is typically important to be able to overmatch the reproductive rate of the pest population under cultivation conditions, since many pests are problematic due to a high reproductive rate. Plants can recover from damage, yes, but young plants are especially vulnerable to damage, and an emphasis on the least recovery time for plants of any age ensures the best yields in cultivation. For this reason, it is paramount to maintain an environment that is optimized for biocontrol agents. If an environment is or becomes ill-suited for one agent to control pests, treatment strategy must account for this by either maintaining a suitable environment or changing the control agent. Life tables articulate the performance of certain organisms in certain environments, either in a controlled or field setting. Biocontrol agents are often tested in agricultural crop environments, and their performance can change due to a number of reasons, including the species or cultivar of crop, genetic culture of the agent, temperature, humidity, prey species, food variety and availability, and other treatments. The intersection of all these details is the life table and it illustrates the tendencies of a biocontrol agent and provides largely underestimated but crucial information for decision making. When processing life table data in order to decide whether a biocontrol agent is appropriate, try to find conditions explored that match the intended cultivation environment, including pests and crop species. If the crop or the pest is not the same species, but has similar physiology or is highly related, the information is more likely to be relevant, but not always. Graphs and diagrams may depict population rates of the agent on prey over time and include different instances where temperatures increased or decreased, like in the introduction. In those graphs, the spider mite Tetranicus mcdanieli produced about 3,700 net progeny per generation at its peak of 35 degrees Celsius, which is 95 degrees Fahrenheit, with reproduction severely declining at higher temperatures. Meanwhile, Stethorus punctillum has a peak of about 1,600 progeny per generation at 29 degrees Celsius and sharply declines at higher temperatures as well. There are a few interpretations that can be made from this data. Because Tethorus punctillum reaches peak reproductive rate at several degrees less than its prey and cannot tolerate the higher temperatures, there is a range at which the prey can reproduce completely uncontested by this agent. Additionally, Stethorus punctillum's peak rate is about half of its preys at the same temperature, and this means that at the agent's most favorable temperature, the prey generation reproduces twice as fast. However, there is more to biocontrol efficacy than generational reproduction numbers. The same paper, where the graphs can be found, also states that at 20 degrees Celsius, adult female Stethorus punctillum were recorded to consume about 75 spider mite eggs per day. Ideally, 100 females could dispatch 7,500 mite eggs at 20 degrees Celsius. 
Indeed, Stothorus females need to consume many prey in order to reproduce at all, making them more suited to higher density prey populations. According to another paper, Stothorus are much more active at the 25 to 30 degrees Celsius range. Their movements are encouraged on flat leaf plains over those with more variance, and trichome presence impeded seeking behavior. The sheer difference in reproduction does not mean that Stothorus pinctillum cannot be effective against Tetranicus mcdanieli, but it does mean that control strategy must mitigate this disadvantage. One possibility is to simply increase the inundative application rate, multiplying the gross mortality rate of the prey and equalizing the population growth disparity. In other words, if the spider mite pressure is in the low thousands and the temperature isn't too hot, a Stethorus punctillum population in the low hundreds is probably sufficient to destroy it, as long as there aren't too many additional complications. Through this single example, it becomes apparent as to how complex the life histories and control dynamics can be for a biocontrol agent, and how invaluable that knowledge when assessing options is. On the surface, it can appear that the prey might be a bit too much for the biocontrol agent based on reproduction alone, but that changes when the individual kill rate is high.